And in his heart, when he heard about this, look what it did to him. Verse 4, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. It should grieve us that we as a whole are in the condition that we are in. Because people coming off the street needing help, needing the love of Jesus, needing the touch from the Lord, needing His miracle working power, and yet everybody is all divided, unsure, divided in their belief system. You can't find love as a whole. You can't find sometimes even the truth in the church these days. People may pick up the Bible one time and quote one scripture and put it back down and just start telling stories and everybody just loves it. When we should be going over the Word of God line upon line, precept upon precept, because it's the Word of God that sets the sinner free. It's the Word of God that has the anointing. It's the Word of God that has the power. It's not us. It's not anything in us that has these things. It's God's Word that sets the people free. It's God's Word that heals. He sent His Word and healed all those. Praise the Lord. We need to have His Word. We need to have that wall of truth built up. But when we look upon these things, doesn't it grieve you? Doesn't it grieve you that there's 25,000 different denominations? Does that bother anybody? Do you think about that? When everybody else looking out, I mean, even if it's a Muslim thinking about, you know, I'm thinking about going to Christianity, but these people are crazy. I mean, there's 25,000. They're dysfunctional. <laughs> they, none of them know what they believe. That grieved me when I first got saved. I don't know if it's the calling you put on my heart, but I felt just like Nehemiah. I said, something's wrong, Lord. Why do the Baptists believe this way? The Pentecostals believe that way? The Methodists believe that way? The Lutheran, wow, what is wrong with this picture? I studied every one of their beliefs and tried to figure out what is wrong. Why are they just in their love in the church? How come everybody's just so divided and they don't even fight each other, boy? You put them in the same ring or the same house sometimes, family members, and one of them is so and so, and the other one's another so and so, and they, woo, they'll tie into it. They yeah, sure will. Like a dog fight. But I'm a Baptist. I'm a Christian. I'm a Pentecostal. I speak in tongues. But I'm a so and so. They'll just get on with it, boy. They will. And you sit back and just being a newborn, and just being born again, and you're a new Christian, you go, This is grieving. This can't be God. This is quenching my soul. Something's wrong. The walls have been hewed down. The gates have been burnt with fire. The gates of faith. Something's wrong, Lord. And then you start praying. And guess what he starts doing? He'll lay this on your heart like he did Nehemiah. Because the people, not only has it been broke down, but the people are being oppressed. The leaders have taken over the people and oppressing the people. You say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about the wolves have come in. Since the walls have been broken down in Jerusalem, since the gates were burnt with fire, what happened is leaders came up in there and they started taking the people's land. And they started oppressing and putting the people in slavery and bondage in Jerusalem, in the physical. This happened back then. Around 435 is when Nehemiah went in there, 435 B.C. And he went in there to build these walls back up where the wolves couldn't come back in. Where they wouldn't be able to come in and oppress the people anymore. That they could worship God, praise God in the temple and have protection. And that's what he's doing now. You say, what wolves are you talking about? Have you looked around late, lately on the TV and even some of the leaders around and the big churches around? And in January, you're going to catch them. All they talk about is tie, 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 tie. I got to have my money. <laughs> it's true. Why is that? They did the same thing to the people in Israel. These people were oppressed, depressed, and broke down. And yet the leaders come and strip them of their land and start taking their money. God did not raise up a pastor to pastor a church to collect tithes, y'all. Jesus did not collect a tithe one time. People gave out of love to the ministry of the Lord. You read, you'll read all the way through the whole New Testament. You're not going to find people raking people over the coals for money. But you'll find it in the church these days. Why? Because the leaders seek to clothe themselves in the best. And you turn with me to Ezekiel 34. Keep your finger in your mind. We might be there next week. <laughs> If you haven't been here before, I'm looking. But the Lord loves you, though. <laughs> Ezekiel 34. This is one of the scriptures he brought me to five months after I really got honest and got saved. Uh, I was claiming to know Jesus for a long time. But I was running from him for about 20 years. And when he finally got a hold of me, 
and he started revealing his word to me, he took me to this right here and said, this is the shepherds that's been going on in the church. And I'm fixing to tear it down. You're going to be like Jeremiah and people ain't going to like you. <laughs> I said, well, that's great. <laughs> I, I, I really don't want to do this, Lord. He said, well, Moses didn't want to either. He thought he stuttered too much. And you think you stuttered too much. But I'm the one that gave Moses his mouth. And I'm the one that gave you his mouth. And I'm the one that put that calling in you. And whether they like you or not, they didn't like Jeremiah very much either. And he was telling the religious bunch to repent also. And he's telling me the same thing. There are leaders now that's doing this right here. Ezekiel 34. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel who do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Amen. <laughs> oh no! I got to have me a big old mega church so I can own me a four or five hundred thousand dollar house. I got to drive me some Jaguar. I got to be in some limousine. Oh yeah, I'm the man of God. That's exactly the feeling. That's what they're doing now. That's the spirit of pride. Yes. But it's in the church, and they're leading the people. You ever wonder why in your spirit you feel funny when all they keep talking about is passing the plate three or four times a Sunday? And you feel like, man, this can't be right. And then you feel guilty. Oh, well, I'm, I feel like I'm not doing right before God. And that ain't right. I'm telling you. Jesus didn't do these things. If we follow Jesus in the Gospels, He didn't do these things. Guess what? When you really get filled with the Holy Spirit and you get saved, you give out love. Amen. You won't measure no more. It goes way beyond. Sometimes it may not be nothing that week. Other times it may be way beyond your paycheck. You don't know. It all depends on the Holy Spirit and how He leads you. We can be led by the Holy Spirit now, can't we? Mm -hmm. Then why is everybody taking the whip and oppressing the people? Especially in January. Man, in January, they'll get to where they want your whole first month paycheck. <laughs> they call it the first fruits. They do. Y'all, I ain't got time to go into it, but you'll find this in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 5 through 7, how He expects us to give. And it shouldn't be out of compulsion, is what Paul's saying. It shouldn't be compelled to give by somebody popping you with a whip and telling you to measure your paycheck out to them. It shouldn't be that way. It should be out of love of our heart. If it's not that way, it's no good before God. So half the people that's given out these measures that's been popped by the preacher, it's not good going before God anyway. It's vanity. They're stripping the people of their land. They're causing the distraction in the church when God is trying to anoint His church right now. And here's why. Because they clothe themselves. You eat the fat, and you clothe yourself with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. How does he kill them that are fed? Those who are really on fire for God, that are being fed by the Holy Spirit, these leaders are intimidated by it. So what they do is they oppress them and get them out of the church. I promise you, I've been in some. I'm telling you, they... I've been in them when they look straight at me from the pool pit and said, there's four churches, there's, there's four corners, there's a church on every corner. Go find one. And